Hey booktubers, um, I'm here to give my thoughts on Girl with a Pearl Earring by Tracy Chevalier, if I said that correctly. Chevalier is probably a better way to say it. Um, yeah, so it is a, this is a hardcover edition, and it is really um, a rather small book, um, 233 pages. And the font size is kind of, I would say, normal, regular, medium, if you will. Um, I I enjoyed this book. Uh, I'm trying to place it uh, in in a in a category, and it's very difficult to. It, it is a um, historical fiction, um, and it's interesting in the way to me any to me anyway how she went about weaving this book. And I will go ahead and read the uh, synopsis. Um, it says, I'm going to read it down here. It says, history and fiction merge seamlessly in this luminous novel about artistic vision and sensual awakening as seen through the eyes of a young woman who was the inspiration behind one of Vermeer's finest paintings. That one right there. In 17th century Delft, a strict social order reigns, dividing rich and poor, Catholic and Protestant, master and servant. When 16-year-old Griot goes to work as a maid in the home of the city's most renowned painter, she is expected to know her place. But in the Vermeer household, Vermeer is the name of the painter, dominated, dominated by his mercurial wife and her formidable mother, Griot soon catches the eye of the master. Captivated by Griot's quiet manner, intuitive spirit, and fascination with art, Vermeer begins to draw her into his world, a rarefied place of exotic color and dazzling light, shifting shadows and unimaginable beauty. As Griot becomes a vital part of Vermeer's work, their growing intimacy spreads tension and deception in the ordered household, and even as the scandal seeps out, ripples into the town beyond. With its striking sense of period detail, vividly evoking a distant place and time, Girl with a Pearl Earring tells the tale of a young girl on the brink of womanhood whose life is transformed by her brief encounter with genius, even as she herself is immortalized on canvas. Um, now, all of that to me kind of made the book sound like it was a romance. And I guess in some ways it, it was, but um, there isn't a lot of mushy cushy stuff or... I don't remember there being any um, explicit content in it at all. It was just really a very good story. And it, it's historical in the fact that it's, it takes place um, in the uh, kind of the later 1600s, but um, there isn't like a lot of historical facts and long descriptive things about what's going on in the political. It, it isn't anything like that. It's just a very good um, drama, if you will. It's the best word I can come up with. Um, it is divided into four sections. I guess you could somewhat call them chapters. Um, and so like that, 1664. And then we have 1665 and 66. And then the last chapter jumps ahead 10 years to 1676. Um, I'm reading some notes down here at the bottom, so... Excuse me, if I look away, I'm not very good at these. So, um, as you, the uh, synopsis has said, her name is Griot, and she is hired um, as a maid in, in, in Vermeer's household. Um, her father, Griot's father, lost his job in an accident. Um, he went blind, and he was a, a what they call a tile painter. So there were ceramic tiles that uh, decorative tiles that people would place up, I assume, um, around doors and windows or around um, like uh, the baseboard type things, um, and he would paint them. So she kind of has art in her background a little bit, and so this is very interesting when she goes as and becomes a maid uh, for uh, Vermeer's family. Um, one of her jobs is to clean the studio. So she is, I guess you could say, enthralled immediately when she goes, gets to go in and clean the studio. And, you know, there's a half-finished painting there. Um, 
and she's looking at it and and trying to understand how it how the beginning process happens and and the book goes through that a little bit um uh, and she's really in awe of how a bunch of blotches and things on a canvas turn into this these beautiful works of art eventually and there are like three or three or four paintings that are mentioned in the book and the stories weave around these paintings a little, uh, you know, just a little bit. Her her painting, of course, is is where the whole story is is really done. But um, I really wanted to buy an art book of Vermeer's paintings, and I was looking at Amazon. Um, I kind of wanted a hardcover, like a coffee table book, and they're like sixty five dollars. So I was like, well, I guess I won't be getting that right now. But um, it would be really interesting to. When, when they talk about, or when she, Griot, talks about a painting that, that she's watching him, um, or he, is the way it's, uh, Vermeer is, is many times referred to in the book, uh, to see the actual painting that is being talked about. And I still may do that someday, um, and I think it would be very, very cool. But anyway, she becomes a maid in this house, and of course... Katharina is the, the wife of uh, Johannes Vermeer. She's a young woman. They have uh, like six or seven children already when, when, she, be, when she enters the household. And um, so part of her, her uh, things that she has to deal with, of course, is these kids. Um, and she also has to do all of the laundry. Clean the, so clean the studio kind of mind the kids at times and um, do the laundry and then she helps the there's another maid also uh, in the book her name is did I write that down yeah Tanique um, and of course there's some little battlements going on and a little bit of jealousy and things between them two Katharina doesn't really uh, like Griot very well uh, Johannes Vermeer is the one who sort of wanted to hire her um, the, uh, let's see, Katharina's mother's name is Maria Thins, and she lives there with them. Um, and so she really is kind of the head of the household, um, not Katharina, like you would expect. Uh, so a lot of times, uh, Griot gets her commands and the things that she needs to do from her. Um, so anyway, this is kind of how the book, um, starts out, is she goes in, and does this, uh, she gets in trouble with one of the kids right away, and this is one of those snotty little girls who never forgets. And so this girl is weaved throughout the whole story, and I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but this girl that uh, Griot kind of has a disagreement with at the beginning of the book um, is weaved throughout the book, and at the end has a lot to do with what happens. So... In my opinion, it, it sort of has a happy ending to some degree, and um, things work out well for Griot, but I'm not going to tell you how what happens with her and Vermeer. It's obviously there's some romance going on there, but it isn't anything. Um, um, I guess it could have been bad, possibly, but Vermeer did watch himself, and he did very well. There was some tense moments, which made the story very, very good. Um, and it, it, this picture here, it's very interesting how Tracy uh, Chevalier um, weaved the story with how she came to sit for this painting, how she came to wear the clothes that's in here, and of course the earring um, is a big part of the last third of the book and what happens to her. So I really enjoyed the story. Um, it's definitely recommended. I would say that even teenagers, if you are interested in something um, like this, I didn't see really anything in there that would would, would stop you. There's no explicit um, sex or anything like that. It is just sort of a romantic story. And um, I, I would think that um, anybody, you know, maybe 13 or 14 and above could read this uh, without any problems. So... Um, that is my, my thoughts uh, on the book, Girl with a Pearl Earring.